I often see photographers posting these before and after photographs of an image that they shot and they show the raw file, you know, the out of the camera shot, and then they show, and look what I can do with my editing. And they make it seem like it's the editing that makes the image kind of shine and, and look really great. And I agree that you can do a lot in editing and that there's a place for editing, but I also don't think that we need to lean on editing as an excuse for not making great images out of the camera. Oftentimes I see those comparisons of those before and afters and I'm like, that before picture doesn't look great and it could have been so much better. And so today we're going to walk you through exactly how you can get great images directly out of your camera. We're here uh, doing a boudoir session with Rio and I'm gonna show you how it all starts with light number one, background number two, and then number three, dialing in the right settings, getting your exposure right, getting your white balance right, getting your sharpness, your clarity, your contrast, all of that right in camera so you don't have to lean on editing to make your pictures shine. So I've rented a uh, hotel suite here at one of the luxury hotels in Niagara on the Lake, and that's where I typically do my boudoir sessions. You could also do it in your client's home, you could do it in your studio, you could do it outdoors, wherever you want to do it. But when I'm doing a session like this, one of the first things that I do is I walk around and kind of get the room prepped. So I arrive before my client has, has arrived and I open all the blinds. That's one of the first things I do is because you walk in and they've got all these kind of dark out blinds closed down. So I open those up. I turn off all of the pot lights around the room because for boudoir especially, the pot lights are going to give you that down light and you don't want that. And I turn on all the side lamps. So those are three kind of things that I do to get it so that I can work around the room and get great images um, you know, pretty much anywhere I want to go. The last thing that I do is I clean up all the surfaces and all the areas. I don't want there being little welcome cards or little you know, chocolates or a phone on the bedside stand. I want to clean up the surfaces so that there's pretty much nothing that you can see in the background of any of the pictures. So I'm photographing with my Fuji uh, X-T3 and I'm actually doing most of these photographs today in black and white in camera. Uh, with any mirrorless camera, you can actually preview the image the way that the image is going to be shot because it has an electronic viewfinder. So I'm actually able to see my settings um, as I'm adjusting them, my exposure, my white balance, not in the case of uh, black and white, but you can actually preview these things as I'm photographing. So I'm, I'm shooting here in um, black and white mode. Specifically, I'm using the Acros film simulation. I have my highlights set to plus two. I've got my shadows set to plus two and I have my sharpness set to plus two. And I've um, dumped noise reduction all the way down because I don't want the camera to do um, any of that. I leave my white balance on auto because for black and white it's not going to make too big of a difference and I trust the camera to make decisions on white balance for me in this uh, particular setting. So I always, again, start with light. Light's going to be the first thing that I'm looking at for boudoir photographs and again we're using this window light to try to create three different looks. And the first one I'm going to create is more of a side lit kind of um, scene. So I've got Rio uh, set up here and the light is directly to her right, to my left. So I can um, basically have her look at the camera. It's going to create kind of a nice wrap around. If I move her closer to me, it's going to go more into split light. If I move her further away, it's going to go more into like a broader kind of flat light. So I'm going to start with this setting here and then I'm going to kind of move around and use uh, the same window light to get different uh, looks and different effects. I'm in a pretty low, uh, lowly lit, lowly lit? dimly lit room. So uh, ISO uh, 3200 is where I'm going to start for this particular shot. And uh, I'm shooting wide open. This is a 50 uh, f2 lens. So I've got it wide open at f2 and I've got my shutter speed dialed in at 1 2 50th of a second. And again the nice thing with the uh, electronic viewfinder is I can actually see what's happening as I make adjustments. So as I go down on my shutter speed to you know 1 80th there I can see what that looks like. I can go up to you know 1 400th and see what that looks like. And I can actually see what my exposure is looking like. So I usually just kind of use that as a guide for where I need to be landing with my shutter speed. So with that, uh, you can kind of see now I've got Rio there. I've kind of got the light to her side. I'm going to have her for this first image anyways, looking into the light because I want to kind of let that light wrap around. I've got her body spun away from the light just to kind of create some shadows and some detail there. And I'm going to use that and kind of play around and get a few different images in this particular setting in this pose with this lighting. I love that. Bring your eyes just a little bit lower. Just so you're looking a little bit lower. Perfect. Lean in just with your shoulders a tiny little bit towards me. Perfect, there we go. Love that. That right there. And at the count of three, I'm gonna have you bring your eyes right here to me. One, two, three. Beauty, hold that. Love that. And just bring your eyes just down one more time there. Perfect. Good. 
And again, at the count of three, I'm just going to have you bring your eyes right here. One, two, three. Love it. So that's kind of, you know, setup number one. You can see, you can play around with your composition. You can play around with your settings. I kind of got a, more of a full body shot or a three quarter shot. And then I went in and got a little bit of a tighter shot. Uh, and you can play with it if you had her look away, have her look towards the light, have her look at you, um, change your settings and, and play around with the scene. So I just had Rio uh, beside the window where I had some nice sort of side light coming in and I'm actually gonna now photograph into the light but I'm going to place Rio uh, in front of something that is darker behind her so that I can get kind of some nice rim light coming in onto her body. Um, I'm actually gonna have her face uh, sideways so that we can kind of get that light falling across her chest as I just hit the microphone. So I'm gonna have her spin and uh, sort of face down the wall so that I can have the light coming across her chest um, and then as I'm photographing sort of into that light, it's going to be nice and contrasty and we can kind of play with that a little bit. Point your chin just down a little bit more if you can. Perfect. So you can see the difference. If I, if I had Rio, Rio, if you just take like uh, three steps or two steps towards the, the wall that way for me, if you can. Perfect, there we go. So you can see there, I mean, I can get a totally different look and I can actually have a more of a high key shot and blow at the background, which is actually a nice look in and of itself. But if I have Rio back up a little bit there for me, back where you were, keep going one more step. Perfect. So because I've got that darker background in behind her, I can see the contrast of that light coming in and kind of hitting her face, hitting her chest, hitting her hand, and I can kind of create that nice depth in the image. Perfect. So just that left hand, bring that on down. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Love that. And give a bit more of a, of a stronger turtle there for me. You got it. Perfect. Come in. <laughs> bring uh, that right hand down there for me just for a sec. Right? Perfect. And just very slowly, spin your shoulders towards me a little bit. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Right there, perfect. And then just spin your head to the left there for me. Perfect. Strong turtle. Here we go. Chin down, eyes down. <laughs> perfect. So you can see, I'm going to hold the camera here just for a second. You can see the difference that it makes. Rio, if you slowly spin your shoulders back away from me now. See how it's a bit more flat there on her chest? And then as, Rio, as you spin back towards me, keep coming, there we go. It all of a sudden creates contrast. And if I want to keep the contrast on her face the same, I'll have her just spin her head. Eyes down there for a second, there we go. Perfect, hold that right there. Just breathe through your lips. Perfect. Love that. And so by playing with the light like that and by kind of adjusting and, and doing, you can use the light to create the contrast for you that otherwise, you know, you see these before and after pictures online and the before picture always looks on contrasty or flat, I think is the term that we want to be using. It looks flat, it just doesn't look dynamic, but we can use light here in combination with shooting it right in the camera, with the right settings, with the right exposure, uh, with the right you know sh uh, shadow tones, with the right highlight tones, specifically on the X-T3, um, and you can get this great image out of the camera. There's not much more I would want to do with this image um, in post-production. So you can see uh, right now, this is sort of like I've got Rio sort of like 90% where I want to have her in terms of the pose here, but one of the things that we often will lean on for boudoir sessions is liquify or retouching uh, photographs to make our clients you know, look more flattering. But I, I believe that there is so much that we can get right in the camera. There's so much that we can do as we're photographing so that we don't have to rely on liquify or retouching too much. And it's little posing finesses that can make a big difference uh, if, you, if you pay attention to them as you're actually photographing. So right here, as you're kind of looking at Rio, um, you can just sort of see now, now Rio by no means, uh, you know, she's, she's got a, a beautiful figure and so she's not gonna have any issues here, but if we just stand normally, like how we normally stand, typically we kind of keep our head you know, kind of back a little bit and we're gonna have a little bit of a, of a kind of a pouch that kind of falls in there. And you can see here, it's okay and I could do a little bit of liquefying to kind of just fix that or I could just have Rio stick her chin out just like that, that's maybe a little bit aggressive. Pull that back a little bit, there we go. <laughs> okay, there we go, it's like that, perfect. And just kind of, just a little bit more actually. 
There we go, perfect. So just like that, and you can see the difference that that makes, and then just kind of unturtle there for a sec, Rio, versus that, and then go back into the turtle. There we go. It just sort of elongates, <laughs> okay. it elongates her neck, and it kind of just makes this nice and smooth, and makes it so you don't have to go in afterwards and retouch. And you could make that finesse, you know, a hundred different times in a hundred different ways, but by paying attention to those details as you're photographing, it makes an image that much better right out of the camera. So. <laughs> We've used the same window light now to make two different images. One, it was sort of a nice side lit uh, shot. The other one was more backlit and I got that nice rim light, very contrasty, very moody. I can now do more of a flat light and have the window behind me and kind of just, you know, spilling onto Rio right here and then use that light there. This is a very flattering light, especially for boudoir. It's gonna be not as moody, not as contrasty, but you can still get some really beautiful photographs this way. So one of the things that I'm actually sort of wondering is I've got this set up right here and I'm loving the light on Rio, but I'm actually wondering if that lamp in the background is gonna be a little bit too bright, it's a little bit hot. And when I first started the session, I went around and turned all the lamps on. I'm gonna now go and actually turn that lamp off and see if it's gonna make a big difference. Because you don't love lamp. Because I don't love lamp. <laughs> there, oh, look at that. Ooh, there she is. So now <laughs> <laughs> so the tones just kind of open up a lot more. I'm not going to have this hot spot in the background and it's just going to give me a much more pleasing tonality in the overall image there. And I'm actually going to try cropping it out because I, I sometimes find it awkward to have a lamp or a light in the picture if it's not on because we expect it to be on. So I'm just going to try and actually crop that out and keep the tones a little bit more even over here. Perfect. So we'll actually just look out towards the window there for me if you can. Gorgeous. Hold that right there. With that, um, your right hand, maybe just kind of bring it on in and kind of hook it into your, there we go. Yeah, perfect. I just kind of want to have your hand forward a little bit. Perfect. And bring your eyes down again just there for me. Perfect. And at the count of three, I'm going to have you look on out towards the light there again. One, two, three. Gorgeous. So I'm moving my focus point around as I'm photographing. I see a lot of photographers doing the focus and recompose technique. And when you're shooting wide open or if you're shooting with a very shallow depth of field, it's gonna be difficult to actually nail your focus that way. And a lot of times we look at the pictures and we say, oh, you know, there's something wrong with the camera, there's something wrong with the lens because you have it out of focus. And it's because you've focused and then recomposed and then you've shifted the focal plane because of that. So as I'm photographing here, I'm actually moving my focus point around and I usually put it on the eye, the eye that's closest to me to get the focus right. Bring your eyes down there again for me. Perfect. At the count of three, I'm gonna have you bring your eyes right here to me. One, two, three. One of the things that a lot of photographers struggle with in boudoir is uh, finding you know, poses that work or kind of working with the space that you have. We're in a small hotel room here. It's no more than 300, 350 square feet. Um, and so you only have so many pockets of light that you can work with. And so I often encourage photographers to you know, get set up in one you know, scene, one setting, get the shot that you want, but don't necessarily stop there. Kind of take where you are. Now you've got 360 degrees that you can work with. Kind of keep your subject where they are and then move yourself around to see what other kind of angles, how the light changes and how everything, the composition will change, the background will change as you move around, you might be pleasantly surprised to finding something that you wouldn't have otherwise seen by default. So I started here photographing Rio kind of with the nice flat light. And as I move over here, all of a sudden I've got now a much stronger kind of side light. And, <laughs> and it's, it's a totally different background, a totally different setting, um, but it's the exact same location, the exact same kind of pose and starting point. So I might use this now as a starting point to get my next shot. Go just hold that right there. When I'm doing a boudoir session in these luxury hotels, they've obviously got this you know, nice decor, they've got tables, they've got chairs, they have these things all over the place, um, but sometimes where they have things placed is not where I would want them based on where the light is. So I've got this kind of really neat kind of corner of light over here. The quality of the light is beautiful. I actually love the background over here too, but we've got this table and chairs, and so I, I have no reservation in just completely rearranging the whole room. I'll move couches, I'll move desks, I'll move phones. 
sometimes I feel like, you know, the, the cleaning staff must come into the hotel rooms afterwards and be like, what? They need like a, a floor plan to remember where everything goes. But uh, I'm looking for light. And if you focus on light, don't be apologetic about what you have to do to get the best light for your photographs. We have this really nice, uh, you know, quality of light that's coming over here from this, not, it's a window and a patio door, but you'd get a similar kind of look out of a patio door if you were in a hotel room with a patio door. Um, and I can photograph this way. And again, I'm just gonna kind of encourage you to think about uh, how you are moving around a light source to get different kinds of images. I can obviously have Rio here and I can get really, let me get my camera. <laughs> I can get uh, really beautiful soft light. It's a massive light source. So it's gonna wrap around really nice and it's gonna have a really beautiful uh, tone to it. One of the things that I'm typically aware of, and it's gonna be dependent based on the, you know, the light, the, the, the subject, everything, but I typically wanna have the face in towards the light. And you can see um, the difference that it makes as Rio's over there. So actually Rio, if you can spin your head back away from the light. And, and it's, it's, it's not bad. I mean, like it's kind of a bit more mysterious. It's sort of interesting and I might get an image like that. But as soon as Rio moves her head towards the light, see what a difference that makes, right? And all of a sudden now you've got this big, beautiful soft light on her. Um, I'm gonna probably just bump up my shutter speed a bit. And sometimes what I'll do as I'm photographing, you can see I'm still shooting at ISO 3200, but I've got my shutter speed up at 1 2,000th of a second now. So I can actually just dial down my ISO. I mean, again, on the X-T3, on most modern cameras, 3200 is not gonna be any problem, but might as well shoot at the lower ISO if you can. So I'm gonna go down to ISO 400 and just see if I can get my shutter speed closer. There we go, so that's at 1 250th of a second. I love that. Spin your head just a little bit more to the left for me. Perfect. And bring your eyes down, perfect. Let's actually just bring that hand down for me. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. I've gotten that shot that I wanted to have. It's beautiful wraparound light. It's of you know great quality. And I could keep playing here. Of course, I would spend a lot of time here photographing. Um, Rio actually just moved against the wall and I'm seeing another amazing pocket of light. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm totally fine with being a little squirrely when I'm on a shoot. Like I might have an idea of where I wanna go, but you know, if I'm just like, oh, nice light, I kinda wanna be able to react to it and move with it. And that's why I don't love the idea of bringing Pinterest boards to shoots like this or bringing you know, this sort of like list of images that you have to get because it's all about the light, it's all about the subject. You have to work with both and just get the images as they, as they happen. I shoot uh, honestly probably 90, 95% of my boudoir sessions with this lens. This is the 50 millimeter F2. It's a roughly, I think it's a 76 equivalent in full frame terms. Love that focal length for boudoir. Um, but when the room allows, when the light allows, when I'm working in the right sort of um, scene, I will switch to my 90 millimeter uh, F2, which is this guy. And I love this lens. It's beautiful, uh, great quality, nice and fast. Uh, Autofocus, it's got great sharpness, um, but just the, the focal length difference from 90 to 50 makes a huge difference in the way that the image looks. It's a bit tighter, so in a smaller hotel room, I can't pull it out that often, um, but when I can, when I have the, the length to work with, I will use that, so I'm gonna switch that right now. Spin your shoulders back a little towards me if you can, Rio. Keep going, keep going. Right there, perfect. And then bring your head, yeah, that way, you got it. Gorgeous. Let that right hand just kind of drop. Yeah, you got it. Perfect. Gorgeous. And come in for a tighter shot. Spin your shoulders just back a little more towards me. Perfect. Head a little to the left. Strong turtle. <laughs> Gorgeous. I'm back in the office now and I have offloaded the photographs uh, from the session with Rio. And I wanna just kinda of hop into the computer here and walk through some of them just to kinda of show you some of the images that we got as we were making them because you saw the behind the scenes and now you get to see what the actual finished images will look like. Now again, I'm photographing or I photographed this session with the Fuji uh, X-T3 and at the time of recording, I actually uh, don't have Lightroom support for the X-T3 so I can't even work on the RAWs. And this kind of further emphasizes my point, of course, eventually Adobe will release their update to support the raw files in Lightroom, and 
Adobe Camera Raw. But at this point, all I have to work with are the JPEGs. I shot raw plus JPEGs, so eventually I will be able to go back and work on the raws. But um, I kind of like to use that, uh, or I don't want to use that as a crutch. I love the idea of being able to just work with the JPEGs, work with the images right out of the camera. And as I was mentioning during the session itself, there's so much that you can do in camera with light, with posing, with exposure, with uh, white balance, with your settings, with your, your highlights and your shadows and your uh, sharpness, all that in the Fuji cameras uh, that can get you to you know almost a finished image right out of the camera. And that's kind of what I want to pop up here and show you. So just as I kind of open up the images here, I use Photo Mechanic to uh, ingest my images, to call them, to select them. If you go back, we'll link up the other video that we just did, a previous video with the GFX. At the Sunrise session, I kind of walk through more of my workflow and how I use Photo Mechanic, how I use Lightroom for these images. So go back and watch that if you're interested in seeing more in depth. But here I've kind of got the image pulled up. Uh, I can go back to all my contact sheet here and just view all the images or pull them up one by one. I always leave my sidebar kind of open like this. I have this little preset that I've kind of filled out so it shows me what camera I shot it with, what the date and time was, the length, uh, uh, the lens, sorry, the focal length, and then my basic settings just so I can kind of see at a quick glance what it looks like. I leave my zoom uh, little tab open here because I use that to check focus. So as I'm kind of going like this, if I just press the Z button, uh, or Z, uh, then it goes and zooms in there and I can quickly take a look. I can press that again to uh, zoom out or to get rid of it. If I click it in, I want to zoom in even more. So by default, I have it set to 100%. I can go to 200% and zoom in and just check there. So I use that as I'm calling to check sharpness. I also leave the histogram open just because why not? I've got the space on the right-hand side and I like to see it just for quick reference. And that way my, my computer screen isn't leading me in the wrong direction. I can actually see the histogram as I'm judging these images. So you can see here, I mean, these are these are quite literally the JPEGs out of the camera. You can see I've got the raw, the RAF, which is the Fuji RAW file, and the JPEG, but I'm just viewing the embedded uh, JPEG preview here on these images, and there really isn't much that I would want to do with these images. I know that you were able to see as I was photographing uh, in the electronic viewfinder on the X-T3, but as I'm looking here now, on uh, my Retina Display laptop, I'm looking at these images. They're sharp, the clarity is beautiful on them, the tones are perfect. That's one of the things I love so much about the Fuji JPEG files is that they're just beautiful out of the camera. There really isn't much that I would want to do with these images, especially for proofing. I mean, if I'm you know doing a book or if I'm doing prints from this session, maybe I'm gonna wanna go in and do a tiny little bit of retouching and just get rid of some of the blemishes on the face. Um, but for the most part, if you're using the right light, if you're using the right settings, the right exposure, the right white balance, obviously in this case I'm shooting uh, black and white, so white balance is less relevant, although it does still come in play. Um, I'm really happy with these images. I really wouldn't want to do too much to these images. Um, and that is where you can really save yourself a ton of time by getting it right in the camera, by focusing on being a great photographer, by watching for the light, by finessing the pose, all those kinds of things. It makes a big difference um, so that you don't have to spend all that time editing on the computer. You know, one of the things with boudoir photography is a lot of photographers might get into it because they kind of, you know, feel excited about getting into a scenario where, you know, they're photographing a, a woman in her bra and underwear. This happens a lot with male photographers, unfortunately. And one of the things that I like to remind photographers about when they're considering getting into boudoir photography is a couple of things. You're photographing a woman in a very, very vulnerable setting. They're typically not comfortable. Rio is used to being in front of the camera, but most of the time, 99% of the time, when I photograph boudoir portraits, the client is not used to being in front of the camera. It's a bride who's never been photographed before, or it's a mom who got back in shape and wants to celebrate that through boudoir photography. So you have to really work hard on making the woman feel comfortable and it's uh, not as glamorous as it might seem on the outside. You know, I have a lot of, you know, friends or family members or photographers who are just getting into it that say, oh, boudoir photography, that sounds exciting because of obviously the subject matter and what you're photographing. Um, but it's probably one of the more challenging things to photograph because you've got the relationship to work on. You have the natural um, self-consciousness that your subject will have. So you have that vulnerability that you have to work through. Um, and then you have to work very hard to make sure that you're getting great images that do not uh, lean into that vulnerability that the client will naturally have. 
So there's a lot going on in your head, a lot going on in your client's head. Um, it's not as easy as, you know, pretty girl in in pretty bra and underwear taking pretty pictures. There's so much that you need to be thinking about. And I hope that you were able to maybe see that during the session, all the little bits of finessing um, that you that you can do to make these images great on the computer. Um, and that's how I would be able to get through a boudoir session on the computer, you know, in, in 15 minutes, I would go through, I would select these images from Rio session and uh, pretty much would bring them into Lightroom, do the basic thing to them, which just gets them back to the point of them being JPEGs, some small exposure adjustments if I need to. And I would be just as happy to just proof those as is. So there's so much that you have to think about when it comes to boudoir photography. I mean, I'd argue that in any kind of photography, but especially boudoir photography, because there's, you know, nothing to hide behind, you know, you've got a client in there in their lingerie. And so you've got to really be sensitive to that and make sure that you're aware of the lighting, the posing, the exposure, um, and how you can, you know, make these images as beautiful as you can directly out of the camera. Otherwise you're going to be spending hours behind your computer working on these images. So thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Thank you for staying around until the end of this. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, and I hope to see you again 